Jennifer, how are you? Hi, I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm oh, thrilled. De delighted to be chatting with you. How's life in LA? Um, it's, it's, it's great. We just came out of a little heat wave, um, which I didn't expect, um, but we're kind of back to, back to normal today. Um, I don't have air conditioning because I, the, that my house is near the ocean. So people just don't, I know it sounds kind of weird, but yeah, we don't have air conditioning. So when it is really hot, you're, you're kind of like, you're really not, <laughs> you suffer a bit. Um, but yeah, and I, we were just chatting that my Instagram was hacked, but I'm back into my account. Yay. Oh, that's a pain. So, Are people yeah. doing that because you've got, well, you're, you're a famous name. You've got a large following, <laughs> followers, haven't you? I wish. <laughs> famous in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> you're from New York originally. How, how come you moved to LA? Was that with your husband's business? Uh, I've been looking at your websites, yeah. so the notes and things that you put up there. Yeah, I grew up in New York um, and basically I moved here um, on a business transfer um, with my ex-husband and ended up just staying even after I got divorced, I stayed because my kids were raised, you know, this was their home and they were in, in school and um, it's really, you know, it's very expensive, but um, I was in a really good school district that was like public school. So, um, you know, and you can't beat the weather. It's, yeah. you know, it's great. So, um, yeah. So now I guess I'm like a, an L, an Angelina, what do they call it? Angelina? Angelina. <laughs> no, I <don't> know. <laughs> but I, I feel like you can never take the New Yorker out of a person. Yeah. I still yeah. have that New York vibe. I'm sure people can sense it here in LA. <laughs> yeah. You still got New York accents, haven't you, as well? From what I can tell. Um, I don't know. I where I was where I came from on Long Island, there wasn't yeah. much of an accent, but um I think I say things like wait online instead of in line. There's certain uh, words that I use that I know is yeah. has a little um a bit of a, a New York type twang to it. So <laughs> yeah. Your accent's not not super extreme. Liverpool, it's called a scouse accent from Liverpool. I like it. I like it. I had to do a little research for my second book because one of my characters is is from uh, London. Oh yeah. So, Have you been over? Yeah. Been over to the UK? But part oh, of your research course. or yeah. travel? Yeah. 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 My my mom was actually um, a commander of the British Empire. Oh. And she got a medal from the uh, Queen. So. Brilliant. The medal was was stolen from my house. I have to try and get an, get it back because so you can call the embassy and yeah. you have to like provide documentation, but. I think somebody probably thought it was valuable because it was really pretty. It was in like a box, you know, yeah. it looked really fancy and said for God and the Queen on it. It was super yeah. cool. Oh, but yeah, she was the president of the British American Chamber of Commerce. And so she yeah. got, it was a long time ago. But, no, I was yeah. uh, surprised. I didn't, I've, I've done a bit of research on yourself as much as I can. I didn't dig up any nuggets like that. That's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she's been dead for a really long time, but um she would fly over on the Concord. I don't know if you remember here. Oh, yeah. You yeah. remember the Concord. Yeah, yeah she yeah. would go over quite a bit. And um, yeah, but uh, yeah, so London's kind of near and dear to my heart. And um, I love it. I can't wait to go back. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll have to have dinner when I come visit. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, let's let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but before talking about your writing, Jennifer, can I ask what you do for the hobbies and relaxation? Are you still practicing or teaching Pilates? Yeah, I have one client still. Um, she's sort of like my mom. She's been um, in my life for a really long time. And um, I have another job too. Um, I, I'm, I work in sales for a financial company. Um, so I, I'm pretty busy, but I definitely take time every day to exercise because um, I feel like it helps release a lot of stress for me. Um, I'm also taking, I take a writing class every Sunday and there's a lot of homework involved with that. Um, I'm finishing my third book and I'd say writing is um, my, my greatest love and my, my absolute heart and soul. Um, but you, it's very difficult to make a living as a writer, especially an indie author. Um, and you have to really hustle. So I'm hoping my third book will get picked up by a big publisher and um, it will ease a little bit of the marketing stress that um, is so time consuming yeah. for indie authors because you just have to keep hustling and, and, and putting your yourself out there to try and spread the word. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. Re based on reviews as well, isn't it? You know, you can encourage people to re write a review, even if it's only a couple of words. 
Yeah, reviews are so critical and it's really hard to get people to write reviews. Um, and I think I always say when somebody's compelled to write a review, they either really hated the book or they really loved the book. So, <laughs> yeah. um, but Address to Color of the Sky has an incredible reader rating um, and I'm up to 205 reviews right now. Wow. And Amazon pulls reviews down whenever they feel like it. Yeah. I think sometimes they're just like a big monster that you just can't, <laughs> you can't beat sometimes. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I've been really just so touched by, by these reviews and, and they're just, they're magnificent. So um, I think that speaks for itself to me. If you want to look into a book, read the reviews. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have, you, have you had any of the um on mine um i've got a couple of one star and two star reviews on amazon when you click on the one star reviews it, there's nothing there it's still amazon yeah, is just having a bit of a laugh with you for some reason yeah I, I think sometimes what they do is um so people can review a book or they can rate a book ah. so if they rate it it's yeah. not shown as a review it's just a rating okay yeah. And honestly, I think it's it's important that if you only have five star reviews, there's something wrong. Yeah, true. Because true. one of the things I learned, first of all, is you have to have a thick skin as a writer. I mean, not everyone's going to like your work. Not everyone's going to like your writing style and not everyone's going to like the subject matter. Hmm. And um, honestly, I, I got a DM from from somebody in, in London who said they wanted to read my book and they couldn't finish it. So what? because it was triggering um, and painful. So. The, th the thing is, is that my book does touch on a lot of painful things and it can be really triggering for people that may have endured um, painful childhoods and child abuse or experienced or know people who have. And, um, you know, so I and I understand that. But at the same time, a lot of people have reached out to me and said how much the book has changed them and how much it helped them and gave them hope for their own personal um, healing and emotional well-being. So, yeah. A bad boy grin flashed at me. I love your number, so we can hang out while you're healing. I was high on his attention, my drug of choice. He placed a napkin and pen on the middle tray. Old school, he said. No one writes down their digits anymore. Out of habit, I wrote the first three of my number and the last four of Christians. I'd learned the hard way to bang them and leave. Yeah. Your, your first book, Address the Colour of Sky, was this was this based on sort of autobiographical? You know, the elements of your life on there. You know, this, this yeah. um, it's a brilliant yeah. open line. I think the best I've ever seen. Prudence is a sex addict, and that makes it just makes you want to. Whoa, let me have a read of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting. A lot of reviews have been written by men, and that obviously wasn't my original um, demographic, but. I'm thrilled and, and I love that I have been able to grab the male reader market um, a bit and um, to get men to even love it enough to write a review. Um, and there's a lot of them from men. So, and I think it's really great to get into a woman's head and, and see how, how through our head, how, how hard we are on ourselves, how consumed we are with food and eating and like our bodies and what we ate and what, you know, I mean, the thoughts are just, it's, if a man got into our head, he would just be blown away. <laughs> it's like, he'd be like, what is going on? Um, so yeah, to answer your question, um, I started writing that book um, at a point in my life that I, I was getting a divorce. Um, I wanted to figure out why did I marry this person? Why did I have, um, why did I choose to be with someone that I knew was an alcoholic? Um, my dad was an alcoholic. I felt there must have been a correlation. Um, I also hadn't come to grips with what had I had experienced in my childhood. And one of the things I learned during my research and the healing process of um, writing Address the Color of the Sky is that you what happened to you in your childhood it could it could be very minor and it could be very severe but it's really how did it change you and affect you and and shape your self-esteem and your your idea of love and your idea of what a healthy relationship looks like and self-love and there's just a lot of things that 
Um, so it doesn't really matter what it was that you endured because we've all been through experiences in our childhood that were um, traumatic in some way. Um, and so I really touch, I went deep on my own healing on my childhood and what happened and um, wanted to get, get past it and put this character, Prudence Aldrich, on a journey to go back into her past, accept what happened, come to grips with it, and then find a place of self-love. And I, I used my, uh, a biographical fiction platform. Um, okay. So it's loosely based on my life, yeah. Okay. What was the exercise of writing, was that sort of, did that exercise sort of trauma or demons inside you, do you think? Do you think you sort of mm -hmm. pushed it them out, yeah. outwards? Yeah, for sure. I definitely, um, there was a lot that, that was very hard for me to, to write. Um, and also, um, I, I touch on sexual assault and it's very difficult to write about that without um, scaring a reader away. But at the same time, you want to get it. First of all, I have a very flawed protagonist who is very uh, in the very in the beginning of the book, she's poorly behaved and you might not like her very much. You might think, I don't even know if I want to finish reading this book. She's having sex in an airplane bathroom. <laughs> you know, she's obviously doesn't care about this person, doesn't even know his name, yeah. um, is very flippant. And when you start to learn about what, what Prudence has been through, what her life experience is, that's when you root for her. Mm -hmm. And you see her spirit, you see the strength of her spirit, you see how she has endured um, a very difficult childhood. And that toughened her up as an adult so um but i i honestly think that in the end of the day um what i wanted to do was try and heal myself by writing this book and didn't realize how many others would heal from my my telling my childhood traumatic you know trauma story yeah yeah you, you told several over the awards on your facebook yeah i won seven seven book awards and um i was actually in a restaurant at dinner when i got an email that um the first time that i won an award it was three awards in three categories and they wrote a note saying that they were incredibly impressed this was my debut novel and um every single uh judge was completely in love with the story and and hoped that i'd write a sequel and um I just remember I wanted to stand on the table. I won. <laughs> um, and because in the end of the day, when as an as a new writer, for me to to win against my peers, to have my work um, do well against other writers was very um, exciting for me. But what I what I realized as an indie author is no one really cares about about awards. No readers don't really care that much about awards, and I don't think it matters that much to them. But to me personally, it was, um, it was a very, it was a, a hugely rewarding experience um, to, to have that. Um, so yeah, I was, it was thrown. It's payback, isn't it? I think for, you know, the hard work that you put into writing, the, the number of reviews that you've had and by winning these awards, it, it does, mm -hmm. does pay you back for that lonely time when you're sort of locked away and writing and thinking, am I ever going to finish this? And you yeah, know, you got thirty thousand words, and I think, oh, I'm not even halfway through. It pays back, doesn't it? Yeah, it was a lot of um. So I mean, I was raising three kids. I was working, yeah. teaching Pilates eight hours a day. Yeah. Um, I was very financially strapped. Um, it wasn't the most most joyful time in my life. Um, and I was also digging into my childhood and feeling a lot of pain over mm -hmm. my divorce and the failure of my marriage. And um, it was. I started writing it um, during uh, a very, I'd say probably the lowest time in my life. And um, it was almost like getting poison out of my body mm. and yeah. coming uh, out through the other side was, uh, it was very cathartic and very um, healing in, in ways that I never really imagined. Um, I would read a lot of, of the, of, when I read back, I mean, I sometimes couldn't read it without, without crying. I mean, obviously yeah. it was, it was really close to home for me. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Can I ask you about the, the, the character Prudence? Was that a little bit of a choice, you know, a prude being the opposite of a sex addict? 
Is that was um, deliberate? I, so Prue is, she's kind of a hip, fashionable girl. She's an interior designer. Um, she has a very uh, sassy, witty personality. Um, she swears, she's, but she is a blue blood. She comes from uh, sort of a lineage of, um, I, I guess, just uh, a, a, has a family lineage that makes her a blue blood. So, but she grew up pretty poor. So she was very, um, it was a juxtaposed life, I would say, um, from what I tried to come across in the book. Um, and so uh, I wanted her to have an old fashioned name that represented that old family lineage. Um, but, and I think Prue's just a super cool name that you don't hear very often. Um, and it took me a long time to name the characters. That's something that I really pine over. Yeah. Um, and I came up with the name Aldrich um, because my mom had dated somebody. And my mom was married three times and one of her boyfriends in between the husbands um, was I thought was just the nicest person and he ended up committing suicide. So I used the name Aldrich as a tribute to him. Okay, yeah, a bit of a yeah. homage. You yeah, can... exactly. Yeah, so my mom um, worked her way up from a secretary. Um, she was a very inspiring woman, incredibly, incredibly hardworking. Um, she died at 55, but she moved up the ladder in um, executive search and was ended up being featured in Fortune magazine late in her career. And, um, and then she became the first woman pr um, president of the British American Chamber of Commerce and the only person to, to serve two consecutive terms. Hmm. So um, she was honored by the queen at the embassy in, in um, Washington, DC as a commander of the British empire. And wow. um, it was a very, really big deal, obviously for hmm. her. Um, she got a, I still have this letter from Prince Philip that yeah. um, he, he wrote to her as a congratulations and um, yeah, and the metal is just beautiful. It's in a leather box and satin and says for God and the queen and, um, but yeah, it was a very uh, exciting time and also a time when women were not, um, there were, there was a lot of glass ceilings going on there and, and my mom was breaking through. Um, yeah which was a great inspire inspiration to many women um, in business. Yeah. 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 Going go back to your writing, um, you, you, there's two novels out now. You've got The Dress, The Colour of the Sky, now A Dress, The Colour of the Moon. How, how many are you planning for the series? Um, so I'm actually writing a third book right now that is yeah. completely um, a different, complete, has nothing to do with... Um, this series, I want to wait um, and get picked up by a publisher. Yeah. Uh, so I'm writing a book that I, I feel is my best work yet. And it's called The Ad Agency. It takes place in the 80s in New York. Um, it's an unlikely love story. It's not a romance novel. It's very um, obvious. I'm very character. I, I, I write character driven stories. Yeah. So there's two characters, they're complete opposites. And they both land up at the ad agency. And um, uh, I'm excited about it. And I'm going to pitch it at the Kauai Writers Conference in November. Oh, yeah. yeah. So um, hopefully I'll get picked up. Um, I'm working with an amazing um, developmental editor, and I'm in incredibly honored to be working with him. It's a nightmare, to be honest with you. Every time I send him pages, I mean, yeah. it comes back and he's just such so nitty <laughs> nitpicky. <laughs> and, I mean, I'm just like, oh, what is this? Mean? You know? And I'll get his edits back and I'll just be like, why? But, you know, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. <laughs> yeah. You've got a background in advertising agencies, haven't you? Is that yeah, part of your I career? Did. I worked in advertising in the 80s and yeah. it was a very interesting time. A lot of people were coming out of the closet. A lot of married men hmm. um, were coming out of the closet. Um, it was a time when cocaine was really, really rampant and you could like people were just doing lines. Yeah. Um, advertising was pretty wild, especially the creative department. Um, it was uh, it, it was just a really exciting time to be working in advertising. And I've always wanted to write a book about the 80s um, and that era. And so um, and this has kind of been brewing for some time, and I'm I'm really really excited about it. Yeah, yeah, I'm so. looking forward to it. Can, can I ask you about the, the, the your style? 
I've started reading uh, Just the Colour of the Sky. It's written in first person. Did you experiment in writing it, you know, third person, past tense? Was that a, a, was that a deliberate choice? Did you find that that limited you in some way? You know, did you experiment? Um, so for that for that particular book, um, I really, uh, ex- I tried to write it in mostly what was difficult about was going back and forth in time and not yeah. losing the reader. Yeah. Um, but I felt that when I wrote it in timeline format, it just wasn't as compelling. Um, so every other chapter goes back into her childhood until it merges uh, completely in real, you know, in, in, in real time. Yeah. Um, and so basically um, I wrote it first person because I wanted the readers to get into her head oh. and to really understand and, and, and the evolution of her addiction and her um, growth as a person becomes very evident in her thoughts and her feelings about herself and how she sees others. And uh, it, 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 it's the way that I was able to show her personal growth throughout the process of her therapy and rehab. Um, my next book, I'm going from first person to third person, back and forth. Uh, with the moon, just color of the moon go um, also it has first person and third person. So I try to write more complex um, to, to challenge myself. And so far, just color of the moon's getting incredible reviews and has a higher, even higher rating than the just color of the sky. So yeah. I think sky is like four point seven and moon's four point eight or nine right now and has I think forty. It's almost at 50 reviews at this point, or it might be 54 already. So, um, but I just released it. So, um, but yeah, I mean, at, to answer your question, I, I, for that book, it seemed right to write it in first person, but the next one, I, I, I did both. So um, I'm not really trying to limit myself at all. And I just, I guess I only did it for that book because that, that seemed to me to be the right way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Did, yeah. did you were you offered a, a, a film option someone offered yeah. to buy the film rights how's that going or what is that still yeah. long ago so um basically that um the film options expired and and it was somebody um who was very compelled by the story but had not made a film but was mm-hmm. very had very deep pockets um and i was very i was actually hopeful that it would it would work out and and i still don't know if it will, it may. I mean, the timing of it has expired, but I am always open to conversations on it. And if she ever came back to me and said, hey, I do want to make this movie, I would yeah. I would be like, yay, let's do it. Yeah. She's really talented, she's very creative, but um, I think the process may have overwhelmed her or she just hadn't had her ducks in a row to really yeah. get moving on it. Yeah. And as the years passed, um, the contract expired okay. the agreement. So yeah. um, I do have other producers right now in t- interested in it. And um, the thing is, is that when you haven't published with a big five, you don't yeah. have yeah. the opportunity yeah. and I, you know, I don't have the connections. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I honestly have not lost hope that this will get picked up because I feel the series would make an incredible limited series. Mm. Um, for television, you know, for Netflix, HBO, yep. it's such a great story. It's so uh, relatable. It's incredible. It's, it is, um, I believe, defines the human spirit. Um, and I feel that it would be a, a real blockbuster. Mm. Um, so I haven't lost hope. Okay, it's, it's every writer's it dream, isn't it? To, it wouldn't be expensive to produce at all because it's so, you know, it's not, you know, it's not science fiction. It's yeah, not true. Yeah, historical. Yeah. 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 You haven't got um, heads, it, heads of elephants rolling down the streets and things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. there's nothing, nothing too, too major happening mm. um, as far as set and all that. I just mm. need a couple of really great stars. Yeah. Totally. Uh, who would you envisage? If you had the choice now, Mr. Netflix, Mrs. Netflix knocks on the door. <laughs> Hello, here's your money. We're buying the film rights. You get, you get the decision who plays Prudence in the film. I know. Well, I just, so, did you have somebody um, in mind? I go back and forth with... Um, a variety of um, of people that I think would make a great Prue, um, but I uh, I haven't specifically said this is who I want. Yeah, um, yeah. I think there's some great uh, fiery redheaded actresses <laughs> out there, 
that I think would just do an incredible job. And um, I definitely have my ideas, um, but I don't want to like limit it to by saying it out loud. Um, I know a lot of my readers have have uh, mentioned who they could see um, playing Peru. And I love to hear that. I really do. I could say that I would like Jason Wahlberg to play Mike, the therapist. Um, so because he would just be amazing in that. Yeah. <laughs> There's an, an audio book version. Is, is that for both uh, books or is this just for the just the first one? Um, the sky so book. The way it, yeah. yeah, the way it, it works is you just roll things out slower to create some fire. Yeah. Um, I'm going to use the same narrator um, who's amazing, Marnie Young. Um, and she also was very compelled by the story. And she's an incredible um, award-winning narrator. Mm -hmm. um, and so I do have that in, you know, down coming up um, yep. where she's going to start recording um, and the narrating for the audiobook for for moon and i think audiobooks are very important people are in their cars a lot mm -hmm. and they can take a walk they can um continue their lives while still hearing stories and um i don't personally listen to audiobooks but i i really do think it's a great a great thing and i think it's super important to have audiobooks um, yep. and it's a huge market it's very expensive to produce one when you're just yeah. a little indie yeah. indie author. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I have to I have to roll that out. Um, I'm paying it. I'm actually making payments on it right now just to kind of not pay in a big chunk. Okay. So. Did did you not look at the the royalty share deal with Audible? Um. So I. Uh, so you mean there. The yeah, there's one. There's a couple of options. One, I think you pay up front for your producer for the narrator, and then you mm -hmm. share the royalties between yourself as a yeah. writer and the narrator. I did that the first time. Yeah. Um, but my the audio, the narrator that I want to work with doesn't yeah. do that anymore. Oh, okay. And I really yeah. want the same narrator. So yeah, that's the big star, isn't it? The voice, yeah. you know, you get that I right. Yeah. yeah, I need the same voice. It would just be it would be yeah. weird not to have um, and I love her. So okay. <laughs> Can I ask of the success of both the novels? Has that changed your life at all? Um, I think what changed my life in the beginning was the film option because yeah. um, I received a very um, nice sum of money for that and it was it made it so that the books were profitable mm -hmm. um, so I right now I'm I I changed the cover I don't know if you know yeah. that the original cover um, was designed by the woman who optioned the film rights um, and oh. it caused me some problems on Amazon because oh. the girl wasn't wearing the dress so I wasn't yeah. able to run ads on Amazon um, which is a, a, a total nightmare for an yeah. indie author um, so I have a new design which is behind you and yeah. an artist in, in um, New Zealand painted it I think she's very talented and it um, and it really depicts the feeling and sense of the book. Um, and then she also did the cover for Moon, which complements this. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm now able to run ads on Amazon and strategically target readers who I think would enjoy the series. Um, and therefore my sales have really gone up mm -hmm. and that's been really exciting. Um, I'm not I'm not in a position to retire yet from my, <laughs> my other jobs, <laughs> but um, but writing my dream in life, and I think you have to put yourself, put it out in words, is, is to make a, earn a full living as a writer. Mm. Um, that's that's my dream. So uh, I have to just keep plugging along until until that happens, until I can get enough traction in the market and spread this out to that I don't I don't have to um, continually spend hours and hours marketing, marketing that, that yeah. once the, it gets enough readers hands and then 10 readers learn each reader tells 10 readers yeah. it just starts to spread and yeah. spreads fast what i've mostly learned is the book blogger community on instagram is just so supportive and oh. so kind um and they're a really great group and they're very powerful they are very very powerful mm. so that community has been extremely valuable to me and important to me. And um, so I find marketing to be um, and social media to be a necessary evil. It's a time sucker. It's very, yeah. very, um, yeah. you know, it, it's very, it can be very annoying. Uh, but I actually have an assistant working, helping me because um, 
I can't keep up. I, I have a huge, huge following on Twitter. Yeah. Um, and then I have my Facebook page. It just, it's a lot. And yeah. I just can't, I can't keep up. So I, I just recently hired someone to help me, okay. which has okay. been great. Yeah. Which would you give to other writers? You, you must have people saying to you, I love the book and I have got a book in my head. What advice would you give to a would-be writer? Um, the most important thing for a would-be writer is to not get really caught up on rewriting, rewriting, rewriting. Just get that vomit draft out, the first draft. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, the, no the one can read it. I was just coaching a girl who, who texted me through somebody and said, I want to write my memoir. What Do you have any advice for me? I'm just... I keep going back and editing and I've only gotten on three pages. And I said, just stop editing. Don't go back. Do not go back. Just get the, the only thing that has to happen with the first draft is that it has to happen. Mm. And it, it's called the vomit draft because no one's going to read it. I'm it's going to be terrible. Yeah. And then um, read the book bird by bird. Uh, it's a, such a great book and it's very much it, the advice in the book um, is that it's a tiny little book about notes on writing, basically. Mm. And, and take a little frame or a picture and just do one little tiny picture at a time after you get the vomit draft out. Yeah. Then you can go back and it can be very overwhelming to look at the whole story and oh, you know what, mm. just every day, just take a little tiny picture frame and just do the, do the little, re rewrite the picture frame, something small, don't get yeah. overwhelmed, you know? But um, it takes about seven drafts to write a book. And um, the first one just has to happen. That's it. You asked me so many questions. No one's ever asked me. I right. love it. Oh, good. Because I've had to look through previous yeah. interviews that you've had. Yeah. You've had loads, haven't you, with, you know, with sort of main media? Yeah, yeah. I was on one morning show in Alabama, which was really fun. Um, yeah. An ABC morning affiliate show. Hmm. Um, yeah, honestly, I... I feel really blessed um, just by people like you that have reached out and said, you know, hey, can you be on my show? And mm. it, it's just, I would love to penetrate the British reader market. I mean, mm. I would just die to do that. I think it's a huge market, but like I said, you know, as an indie published author, I just don't have the capability to, to get yeah. there and to yeah. do it by myself. So yeah. Unfortunately, I really do have to get picked up by a big publisher and get that machine yeah, yeah. backing me. So you can get in the airports. Yeah. You know, you can get your book at Target. You can get your book on bookshelves at, yeah. um, you know, Costco. And yeah, yeah. It just, it's, you just, I'm a one woman marketing machine and I can only do so much. So, well, it yeah. looks to me like you're doing a great job so far. Oh, thank you so much. And I really appreciate you asking me to, and I, again, I'm sorry about having missed last week. Nah, that's no problem at all. Yeah, yeah now's the, the main thing. That's what matters. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah thank you so much for everything. Yeah, and thank you. I mean, it's been such a relaxing interview.